Hi, my name is Melinda Hahn Williams. I'm the chief data scientist at Distillery, the custom audience company. So I'll talk about how to do data-driven digital advertising in 2021, which means working in a world where everything is changing always. The third party cookie deadline has been extended, but it's still just around the corner. So the task now is to prepare for the future and optimize for today all at the same time. So I'm going to talk about how to do this by managing your targeting portfolio, the portfolio of all the different targeting approaches you use for your campaigns to actually use post cookie solutions today as part of your campaign strategy in a way that simultaneously prepares you for the future and optimizes your campaigns today. I'll also discuss Distillery's post cookie solution, which is a great one to add to your portfolio, by the way. It's called Distillery ID Free Custom AI and it lets you reach users, even those without an ID, with scaled performance that's on par with the best cookie-based solutions. So the biggest challenge with planning digital advertising strategies in 2021 is the uncertainty of working within this continually changing landscape. So you all know this, but just to level set quickly, uh, in the last couple of years, it's become clear that the industry is moving towards a future where users are not addressable through any default always on identifier and opt in only identifiers are the norm. So the place where this change is really generating the most activity so far is in the, the planned retirement of third party cookies. So for over a year, a lot of the industry was scrambling to get ready for the end of third party for the end of cookies in, in 2022. Um, then at the end of June, Google suddenly gave us this extension on that deadline. So now the new timeline we have is about two years from now to prepare for losing third party cookies entirely. So now many in the industry are a little adrift because now here's the dilemma. So you have to prepare for the cookie deprecation. That is obviously not optional, even more so than before, because now you've been given this extension on your deadline. So you really have no excuse if you screw it up now. At the same time, you can't afford to take your eye off the ball on today's results. Today's results are what matter most today. And since you just got an extension on your cookie deprecation deadline, again, you have no excuse for delivering suboptimal results today. So the problem is that these two needs are at odds. So it's kind of like a, like a classic human problem, really. How do you optimize your actions for do you optimize your actions for today or for tomorrow? So um, some advertisers are already saying that they want to get completely off third party cookies before they're even retired, just to be extra prepared. But let's be honest, cookie based targeted advertising works super well. So how do you prepare for the retirement of cookies without giving up those performance benefits prematurely? The answer, of course, is do everything. Just be like Zayla Avant-Garde, who, of course, is this year's National Spelling Bee Champion. She's also a three-time Guinness World Record holder and can dribble six basketballs at once. Here she's, she's just dribbling four, but um, she has the world record for dribbling most at once, and that's six. Um, okay, but so what do I really mean? What I mean by do everything is not dribble six basketballs at once. What I mean is do today's best solutions and tomorrow's best solutions at once and do it in a way that gives you optimized performance today. So think about your targeting portfolio. Think about your portfolio and use your portfolio to both prepare you for any direction that the future might take us and to optimize your performance today and at every step along the way. So advertisers generally run lots of tactics at once and most advertisers have a sense of a testing phase and a, like a scaled phase for new tactics. Um, and that gives them a framework for how to successfully roll out a new solution. That is not what I'm talking about here. Uh, if, you, if you think of a binary, if you think in terms of a binary of testing and launched, you might end up in good shape once the cookie transition is over, but you won't be running optimized campaigns today and at every step along the way. And the reason is, first, some of those post cookie solutions work well enough that they'd actually improve your overall performance and ROI today if you use them at the right allocation. 
And then second, the optimal allocations of each of these tactics is going to change as we move through this transition over the next two years. So there's going to be a point when cookies aren't gone yet and more of these post cookie solutions um, are ready to use at a scale beyond what would make sense today. So the optimal portfolio is, is going to keep changing over time. And at every point in time, it's going to make sense to use to make use of cookie based and post cookie solutions just with allocations that, that change as those post cookie solutions gain adoption and start to perform better at scale. So the best approach is then to think about all of today's solutions and all of the solutions you'll want post cookie as part of your portfolio today. And then think about adjusting the allocations for each to optimize your ROI today, and then gradually turn those knobs depending on how the world changes. So you'll be prepared for, for any scenario. So I mentioned that some post cookie solutions work well, work so well that they even improve your overall performance today. And you might also notice that in my, my hypothetical example here, I dedicate a healthy piece of the today pie to distillery ID free custom AI. And then I boldly dedicate even more of the pie to ID free custom AI in the future. So I distillery ID free custom AI is a privacy first behavioral targeting solution that performs on par with cookies and reaches users regardless of whether you're using an, an identifier of, of any kind. So it's a great solution to add to this optimized uh, targeting portfolio today and to continue to dial up in the future. Um, and so now, and, and really for the rest of my time, I'm gonna focus on telling you more about this solution, Distillery ID Free Custom AI. So ID Free Custom AI is our patented cookie list targeting solution. It's future proof against reliance on cookies and also inherently privacy friendly because it's not a new identifier. It doesn't care whether the user, whether that viewer of the ad has an identifier of any kind, it's ID free. Because of this, it works on any browser today or in the future. It doesn't have any dependencies on specific browser tech or APIs and it works. It performs well at scale and can be used today as a great complement to ID based solutions. Okay, so it doesn't use IDs to target. So what does it do? It takes a lot of the same approach that goes into the ID-based custom AI audiences that Distillery has been building for years and reapplies that technology to ID-free signals. So the big picture here is this is an approach to target users without any kind of ID by identifying the impression opportunities that drive performance. So we start at looking from looking at the we start by looking at the signals that, that come from um, all of the different combinations of impression characteristics that we're gonna use to make that decision. And then we use a neural network to build what we call the map of the internet that looks at digital journey patterns and maps out the behavioral signals that underlie any web visit. Then uh, we bring in the brand specific goals, ideally with the brand's first party data to build a custom model that's optimized for the brand to pinpoint those precise targeting moments that are predicted to deliver optimal results. And it works. So we've been running ID Free Custom AI with our clients for almost a year now. Um, and here are some results from our work with, with three different brands. Um, so you see here three different brands. Um, we've One is a, a pet e-commerce brand, a B2B logistics company, and a financial service provider. Uh, and we've tested them here in the way that we really recommend our clients test, which is that you, um, you run ID free custom AI on, only on users that also have cookies so that then you can look at those cookie based a KPIs that you know and love and are familiar with and understand really what that performance means. Also to run it alongside other tactics that you also sort of know and understand uh, because you're going to want to first understand how this, this compares relative to other solutions you know about and to set new benchmarks. So as the world changes, um, I think in, in a lot of ways, we shouldn't expect to get the same performance you see today with all this super rich cookie based information. Uh, so in right now is a really key time to be resetting benchmarks for what's possible in this post cookie world. Uh, so looking at the results here, uh, starting from the, the pet e-commerce on the left. So we're looking at three solutions, ID free custom AI and teal, our ID based custom AI in gray and con contextual targeting, 
like classic keyword contextual targeting also in gray. Uh, and we're looking at CPA, so lower is better. And what you see is that the ID free solution comes in just behind the ID based solution on performance and they, they both beat out contextual. Uh, for the next client, the, the B2B logistics company, you see uh, kind of the same pattern. ID free comes in just behind ID base. They both beat contextual by quite a wide, wide margin. And then for the financial services client, uh, we saw something a little bit different. So, so we didn't set out to build an ID free solution that actually beat a ID based cookie based solution. But as we've been testing this, we've been seeing that that in some situations, like for this financial services client, uh, ID free actually outperforms the ID based solution. Uh, so overall, you know, what we what you see here and what we've been seeing across clients is that distillery ID free custom AI performs on par with the best uh, ID based solutions. And so there's another aspect of performance beyond those quantitative KPIs. And it's one that we've, we've seen advertisers look at with increasing importance, and that is who did you actually reach? So a cool thing about Distillery ID Free Custom AI is that we can actually provide a pre-campaign analysis of who the targeting will reach. And this is analysis, an analysis that, that also doesn't have any reliance on cookies or IDs. So this is something that's, that's future proof and will continue to, to work without IDs. So this is an example of a fully um, ID free audience insights we found for the beta test with that pet e-commerce brand. And you see that even though this audience doesn't have a, a bucket of IDs associated with it when we, when we target it, uh, we're still able to understand the customers across a wide range of, of behavioral categories and characteristics. And so you see, you know, some of these are, are straight down the middle for the brand, like pet food shoppers, and others are less obvious, like those who are looking for healthy recipes for humans. Okay, so ID free custom AI, how does this thing work so well, uh, and provide such great performance without any aspect of trying to look at that person's history or profile them or figure out um, who they are? in order to decide whether to show them an ad. Uh, this question is how does it really, how does it infer so much just from looking at what they're doing right now? So it works by understanding the behavioral signals behind that web visit where, where they'll see the ad. Um, and the way it does this, it's powered by an AI-based behavioral understanding of the internet. So Distillery uses a neural network to build a 128 dimensional map of digital behavior. That's what's shown here, this cloud of dots shown in two dimensions here. Uh, and this is built from hundreds of millions of anonymous digital journey patterns. So, so this cloud of dots is a map of the internet. Every dot is a website and nearby dots are visited with websites that are visited with similar intent. Uh, so just to give you a feel for the kind of behavioral signals that um, that this thing has learned, I'm gonna zoom in to this little red box. Oh, wrong button. There's the little red box. So I'm gonna zoom into this little red box. And so that's what you see here. So every dot is a website. Websites that are super close to each other, like almost in the same spot are websites that are basically about the same thing, visited for the same reason. Um, so you can see there's a set of high-end audio websites all right next to each other. Dots that are kind of in the same spot are websites that are kind of about the same thing. Um, so you can see recording gear um, near that. You can see musician gear, teach yourself music sites, uh, more music sites. And, uh, and, and then you can think about like what else is like high-end audio, but in a totally different way, you can start to think about camera blogs or photography stuff and what's like that, maybe graphic design and we have fonts and we have colors. And so you can kind of see how all of these different websites are, are related to each other. It all depends on where they are on this map. And, and this is just a, a tiny corner of it, a tiny corner of the internet, but every single website on the ad supported internet is, is somewhere on this map. And where it is on the map, tells us about the underlying behavioral signals for when someone is visiting this site, um, what does that mean and what does it relate to? So, so now we understand the entire internet. So what do we do with that? So the next step is to, to layer on 
um, the, the brand's goals. We're going to use this map of the internet to, to boost that first party signal, boost what the brand is looking for uh, to, to drive the targeting. So first party data gives us a, a seed signal for the interest in the brand. Um, and then the AI modeling process then expands that indication of brand interest to every site on the internet. So here I'm showing an example for an audio equipment brand where uh, we started with first party data, we expanded it out to every site on the internet. And what you end up with is a customized behavioral intent score uh, for each impression. So you get this, this just for your brand behavioral intent score for every web visit on the ad supported internet answering this question. When someone visits this site, how likely are they to be interested in your brand's message? So we're looking at all of the impression characteristics that, that come with that visit to the web page to predict the impressions that will drive performance for the brand. So you can see in the case of this audio equipment brand, red is hot and blue is cold. So you can see some types of, of web visits that are totally obvious, like those high-end audio sites, and then some that are maybe slightly less obvious unless you know the brand quite well, like um, more car related sites. So we get this behavioral intent score and, um, and this drives the decisioning of, of how to reach someone who doesn't have any ID just from that, that one web visit and how this, this process can infer from that one web, web visit, um, how, which impressions are going to drive performance for the brand. And it works, it delivers performance on par with cookie-based targeting um, and much better than contextual targeting. And it's available today. So this works across all browser types. It reaches users regardless of whether any ID is available for that user and, um, and you can use it today. So just to wrap up, um, this is how to be both prepared and optimized. Uh, and really how to run digital advertising in, in 2020, 2021. And the answer is do everything. So use your targeting portfolio to get tomorrow's solutions in place and optimize for performance today. And while you're at it, include Distillery's ID-free custom AI to reach users with or without IDs with, with scale performance on par with cookies. And just finally, um, there is unfortunately no Q&A scheduled for this session. So if you have any questions, comments, thoughts, you just want to chat more, uh, please email me at melinda at distillery.com. Thank you.